Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this easy basic dog collar that is completely made in the embroidery hoop. Um, some things to note is if you purchase this design from my store, Perry Sheet Patterns, it will not come with the name Daisy on it. Instead, you can customize it with your dog's name if you have software program. All right, let's begin. All right, this is gonna be made in a five by seven hoop. I'm actually gonna use my 12 by eight hoop in my tutorial. However, you can make it in a five by seven hoop. I wanna go over the few of the steps and also show you if you have in brilliance how you can customize this. All right, so the first step is you will see um, it will, when you put in your machine, it will do the placement stitches. So here is one placement stitch. It also has some key lines that we'll need and then this rectangle up here. This rectangle up here is key because it's gonna show us where we're gonna attach um, two sides of the nylon strap. And so you can see there will be a zigzag uh, stitch that will secure it uh, to both sides. After that, we will use the nylon strap and we'll put it down in such a way that a, it will fold over in itself. And this probably does not make a lot of sense, but when you watch the tutorial, it will make a lot of sense. And essentially what happens is um, it will secure right there because there's gonna be the D ring right here. And so then also there'll be the, um, one of the buckle pieces will go here and it'll need to be secured in place. So that's what this box is for. So like I go over it a couple times just to make sure it's nice and secure. The nice thing about doing this on an embroidery machine is it's very precise versus if you do this on a sewing machine, it could get messy because you might not get on perfectly, especially since I, I, I do like to sew. However, my embroidery machine is so much more precise than me actually manually doing it. After that happens, you'll move the D ring over so that you can secure in place and it's going to do the final stitch here. Now, um, that is all you'll get in your purchase is this. However, I would encourage you, if you have a program like In Brilliance, to uh, customize it with maybe your dog's name or maybe some small symbols or something. So my dog's name is Daisy, and if you have In Brilliance, here's what I would do. I would click the A, and I'm gonna click, I'm gonna write the name Daisy, because that's my dog's name. And I have this font called Itch to Stitch Varsity, and it's, I like it because it's clear and also it comes in 0.75 inches or three, uh, three fourths inch. You want your font to be only, you want your font to be three fourths inch because this is one inch right here. So you really want to center it. So like I put my dog's name right there and I can have from here to here uh, personalization space. So if you have a bigger dog's name, let's say you have the name Princess. Okay. See, it gets um, a little bit close, but it still fits. Oh, I did not spell princess right though. That's embarrassing. Now try. All right, so now right there, it goes a little over. So what I would do then is also play with the spacing of it. So make it as close as possible, just like that. That way you can get your full dog's name in there. And if it goes over a little bit, it's not that big of a deal because the D-ring is right here, um, but it just might look a little tacky right there. But you can make it work just like that, okay? But I'm gonna go back to my dog's name, which is, her name is Daisy. Nice and short name. And I'm just gonna have it more so on this side, right like that, all right? My design is personalized and it is ready to go to uh, production. So I have a standard golden doodle and she's about 45 pounds and she is fully grown. So I measured her um, neck and then I doubled it. And so for her, it came to be, let's see here, 32 inches. So that's what I'm doing. And so I consider her a smaller medium sized dog. So like she's definitely not small. She's definitely not large. I usually buy her the medium sized collar when I like go to Petco and such. So um, that's how I got my length. And because I am using ribbon, we have to uh, light the ends, burn the ends so that it doesn't unravel. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay. 
do it to both sides. After preparing the nylon strap, it is time to get your hoop ready. So grab your hoop. It can be five by seven, but I'm using my 12 by eight. Grab some tearaway stabilizer and place it inside your hoop. Okay, this is what we need to do this project. So we have tearaway stabilizer in my hoop. We have our nylon ribbon that's one inch in width. We have a D-ring, a tri-glide, I think it's called a tri-glide buckle or some sort. Here's an actual buckle, both parts, and then also thread that matches. And if you are customizing it, um, whatever thread you wanna do in customization. So I decided to, because the Vikings just beat New Orleans in London today, I was like, let's do Viking colors because we live up in the Midwest and we're Viking fans here. So that's what I decided for Miss Daisy. So let's begin. We're gonna put the, we're gonna do the first stitch, will be, which will be the placement stitches um, on the hoop. Uh, I suggest actually having your bobbin thread match your top thread. So I'm using this yellow, so I have to actually do some winding with my machine. So I suggest you do the same if you are using anything other than white. I would definitely change out the bobbin thread as well. Oh, let me grab that. There we go. Run the first stitch. This will be the placement stitch for the design. Okay, we're gonna grab our tri-glide right here and we're gonna have the top facing up and we are going to grab our piece of ribbon and we are going to go under and then over and we are gonna bring it halfway to through the ribbon like this. Now separate your buckle and grab the prong side. And what you're gonna do is, uh, mine look, might look different than yours because mine only has one. Some come with double so that you would go under and over, but mine only has the one. So it's gonna go just like this. Now we're gonna loosen up the tri-glide clip a little bit because we are going to take this end, the one that we have been using, and we are going to put it under and then fold it over just like this. That way we our edge will meet right here. Now we wanna make sure that we have enough ribbon on this side to be able to get our design and stuff on. So here's what I'm gonna do. So I am going to put, just to check, I do need this side to fold over double like this. And so that is more than enough space right there. So this is actually pretty good where I have it. In fact, I can maybe even uh, bring some more in if I want to. So um, just double checked that you have enough for both sides. Now let's go back to our tri-glide side with our three prong clip right here. We are going to be um, sewing this with a zigzag stitch, stitch right here. So where these meet. Um, make sure that when you put it on the, uh, make sure you're gonna use this box as the placement stitch for this. Make sure that it goes over, but you want this side, the right side facing up so that the zigzag goes on here. If not, you will have the ugly end, which is gonna have like this tearaway stabilizer. We don't wanna see that. So you're gonna tape this securely in place before moving on to, and bringing it to the machine to do that zigzag stitch. So I'm just gonna grab some tape. Since this is nylon, it is pretty slippery, so I suggest taping it very carefully and very securely. I'm actually using, uh, what is it called? It's, it's heat safe um, tape because it's all I have because my daughter went to town on my, um, masking tape so I or I'm ordering some more but yeah so if you have kids they go they like to think everything is theirs all right so I'm gonna take it to the machine it's gonna do a zigzag stitch right here and I'm just gonna make sure that this stays out of the way
We are to remove the tape. I often use my Cricut weeder tool to help me get this tape off because it is so strong. And then I'm gonna grab an X-Acto knife and I'm gonna carefully cut it out, making sure I'm not cutting anything by accident. I'm just gonna make a little square like this. Once it out, it's out, I am going to remove the tearaway stabilizer and then trim up any extra um, tails. And this is what it should look like. Now grab the D-ring and slide it through this end. And also grab the other buckle and slide it through like this, making sure that they are on the right side. So like if I was to fold it over like this, do they clip? And they do, so I have that in uh, properly. Here is where some people go wrong. Make sure the D-ring, the strap goes over the D-ring right there, okay? If you don't, the D-ring will not stay in place. And then we gotta make sure that we have more than enough extra. So what I'm gonna do is, actually I have too much. I'm gonna slide it down like that. And to make it easy, some people like to use, or I would suggest maybe using like wonder clips so that they don't move. So for example, like right here, I am going to put a wonder clip right here on this side and a wonder clip on this side. That way it doesn't keep moving because we are going to, of course, um, use tape to secure it in place. For right now, I'm just gonna have my D-ring right there because I am going to tape this down for that very first stitch. In fact, I'm going to tape this down right here because it will not, it will not sew right here. It's gonna sew a rectangle and an X right here, and there'll be another one right here. However, let us secure this in place just so that it doesn't move too much. So I'm just gonna go like this. Okay. And that's pretty secure. All right, and then we're gonna take it to the machine. At this point, you can remove your uh, Wonder Clips because it has sewn right here. And I'm also going to move some of this tape because I have to move this down in its correct location and then I will re-tape it. So I'm gonna take the D-ring and move it as far as I can right here. And then I am gonna secure this with tape again, just like so. Making sure that I am staying in the lines. And then I'm actually going to tape this down for now, just so that it doesn't move, but it's going to now stitch the square and the X right here to keep this down. So we wanna make sure that is nice and secure. Okay, so I'm gonna take it over to the machine and do that next. All right, I am going to now remove this tape right here. And I'm gonna move my D-ring all the way down here and secure it with tape. And then I'm gonna take it to the machine and run the next stitch. Okay, I'm gonna remove this tape because it's not necessary anymore. And you can see that the D-ring now is stuck in place. If you want to put like a leash right there don't really need that there anymore so that's good 
All right, so the next step that's gonna happen is my, this next step is purely optional. It does not come with the design, but I'm gonna write Daisy right here because that's my dog's name. So I'm gonna make sure that everything is lined up perfectly. And I would not use font bigger than three quarters. So I'm using a font, it's like, like I said, it's from Itch to Stitch, it's called Varsity, and it's 0.75, so three quarters. And I, because this stuff is so, so slippery I am going to tape it very good and then as I go I will take off the tape okay so I'm gonna actually put some more tape right here and I will have to take this off in order to um, keep keep um, embroidering so there's this you can you can embroider anywhere in this square all right, let's continue doing that. Now we just have to remove it from the hoop. So I'm gonna take off this extra. What, what? You wanna do the hoop? You wanna do the hoop too? Okay. I wanna get the hoop down. Oh, sorry, honey. That's not fair, Mom. I know. We're and, gonna do that. and we're gonna clip some of these extra long tail threads. Why you do that? Because we don't wanna see it. Actually, some of these might just be part of the placement stitch, but we definitely wanna get some of those. There we go. All right. And then slowly take off the Caraway stabilizer. It. It's supposed to be like that. You rip it to take off the. See? It's not supposed to be there. Okay. All right, there it is. It's all done. So, all you, that's what it looks like. Oh, um, Oliver, one second. Yep, there you go. And then, Oliver wants to go put it on our dog. So, you ready, Oliver? Yeah. All right, let's go do it. All right, it's time to put it on my dog, Daisy. She is a standard golden doodle. And she's, right yeah, she's right there. She's super friendly. So thank you for watching this tutorial. Um, if you are interested in purchasing this design, please go to my Etsy store. It's called Prairie Chic Patterns. The design I used was the basic dog collar, the in the hoop basic dog collar. Again, I wanna reiterate that no text comes with this. You can customize it though, if you have purchased text already. Thank you.